Hugh Jackman is with us from Swordfish and it's now time to welcome his co-star, the big man on campus, to the couch. He has over 35 films to his credit, including two Academy Award nominations. He has taken the time to fly himself down to the country and take the time to come and chat. We are very, very honoured to have him with us. Will you please welcome John Travolta! <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. It's a pleasure. So you're a dag. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was told that that's something on a sheep's butt. <laughs> but affectionately, it's a good, it's a good thing. It, it, means, you're a down, it means you're a down-to-earth guy and uh, you're good fun. Good. Well, that's what I hope I am. You are. We are good yeah, fun please, together. Let's forget we? the sheep's butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun on this film. But anyway, I'm not talking. No, feel free to join him. It's oh, okay. really? Oh, good. We don't want to frame you out or anything. You anyway. just said in the commercial, shut up, move the other end of the couch. Yeah, but <laughs> I was winking. Oh, sorry, right. Uh, now, John, you flew yourself here for I this did, trip? and I, ha I think I've had a, a moment in history. What happened? Because I own an antique Qantas jetliner. Yes, Ooh. I know. We've and chatted today, about that. I flew into the airport and all the employees from Qantas stood out there waiting for it. <laughs> like an old friend had flown back. <laughs> and it was so much fun to actually have flown this from the United States and to see all the employees who missed the plane. I mean, they had to have been a bit older to yeah. missed it. But anyway, it was really quite a moment. So when, when you're flying in and you're yes. radioing into the control tower and you say, hello, this is John Travolta or JT um, <laughs> on, on the CB, do they freak out? Do they not believe you? Well, they're more impressed with the airplane, I think. Oh, really? Yes. So is it an it's antique? Of, well, I mean, it's, it's maybe 35 years old, but it's, uh, you know, it's what cut the world in half. It's a Boeing 707. And when Qantas first got them, you know, suddenly the, the world shrunk. You could get to England in 30 hours, and you get to the States in 14 hours, and it was a big, very big deal for Qantas to get these airplanes. Have you had any problems with it, technically, if it's an old plane? Well, any plane, you know, you're going to have your average breakdown. You just have to take good care of it. Have you had any problems mid-air where, you know, the Not engine yet. just died? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> have you flown, Hugh? Have you flown with John yet? No. Mm, well, no, I have, yeah, tomorrow we are going to fly together. I've flown in the smaller version, but not the big Qantas oh, that's version. Right. Well, I have been on the plane, and let me tell you, this thing is the size of the studio. It is incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful plane. And probably just as rickety as ours. This is a very rickety studio. You but don't I, want it to be like this. You know, in our uh, time off, uh, Hugh and I would sing songs from Greece. From Greece? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He would play Sandy. Yeah, because was... <laughs> Any particular favourite? Did you have a particular favourite? Something uh, like... Do, do I need to do yeah. anything? Summer loving had me a blast. Summer loving happened so fast. I met a girl crazy for me. I met a boy cute as can be. <laughs> well, all right. Let me input. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh. oh. <laughs> That's all right. So, did you do a lot of uh, Singing and dancing the whole time because you're both musical guys. I mean, you've mentioned our uh, last time. You know what I love about love Australians? Musicals? Everybody who is a performer in Australia acts, sings, and dances. It's the truth. How much, how much uh, singing and dancing did you do in the off time on Swordfish? Day one. Do you, yeah. I don't know, know if you remember this bit, but uh, oh, we were doing it all the time. But the first day, we were in this uh, nightclub where my character gets introduced to John's character. And uh, what they do is they play the music in the nightclub, then they dump it. So the end of the first take, it's about 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, John's sitting there and goes, why, why don't we get the music up? So the music gets pumped up and he goes, come on, everyone dance. Mm -hmm. So John gets up. <laughs> <laughs> He's dancing away, doing the whole thing. <laughs> so I get up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could dance a bit, but oh, <laughs> I'm just going, true. there's John, there's John. That's there's John. <laughs> it's good, a good old boy dancer, you can't beat that. No.
So, um, any chances of doing a music book, musical? Because last time we, uh, you were on the show, John, you were saying that the one thing you wanted to do was a musical. Do you think with movies like Moulin Rouge coming out that they're going to try to reinvent it? You know, honestly, you always hope for that. But the, the truth is, is that Hollywood is very inhibited about making musicals. And I don't know why. I mean, the biggest movie I ever made was a musical, and yet they still resist making them. I think MTV or something has taken over for all that. But on a rare occasion, they make them. And maybe with Hugh and maybe Russell Crowe, maybe we all get together and... You know, just sing and dance or something. Oh, gee, Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, John Travolta in a movie. I don't know if anyone would go. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm supposed to say hi to Russell's mother. Her name is Jocelyn. Yep. So, Jocelyn, wherever you are, I'm saying hi to you. Okay? <laughs> she, he asked me to please say hi to her. Oh, you're so sweet. Isn't right. he? He's a oh, dad. Right. He's a dad. <laughs> Now, in Swordfish, no singing, no dance, and nothing but shoot. It's a fantastic movie, by the way. You've got to be just over the moon about it. Mm. And there's a, a, an amazing stunt driving sequence between the two of you. Did you do any stunt driving courses uh, he did. to do the film? I did. Tell them all about it. Well, the, the, the car, <laughs> this Tuscan TVR uh, came up. Car. Right, it's the size of a matchbox. And John and I looked at it. And I'm meant to be driving, and I thought, well, I better go and do something because we, have, we won't be able to have doubles in there. So I went and did courses, and there's one bit, probably coming up any minute, where... Handbrake. Not this bit. <laughs> there's no class. Anyway, basically, there, John's leaning on the, sitting on the front seat with the machine gun out the back, and he's not strapped in, and I'm coming around the corner and losing control of the car, you know, doing the old swish thing. And I said, John, I'm going to lose control of the car. Great, let's go. I said, no, I'm, I'm like going to lose Trust. control of the car. <laughs> and you've got a big machine gun and you're just hanging out of this matchbox car. No problem, let's go. I trust actors because usually an actor that's as good as Hugh is has to be excellent for their own ego. They have big pride in what they can do. So I knew that after his lessons of stunt driving, he'd be great. So I just... Let him have at it. The producer, however, didn't know. <laughs> he came up and had a quiet word in my just don't forget who the hell is in the passenger seat. <laughs> Be very, very careful. Yes. Well, look, we're going to take a bit of a break. Uh, please stick around. We'll have more from John Travolta and Hugh Jackman after this. Welcome back to Rove Live, John Travolta and Hugh Jackman. The stars of Swordfish are still with us. Now, I mentioned earlier about, uh, oh, with you, Hugh, about Halle Berry and the $1 million uh, to bear her breasts. Now, John, something I read in the paper over the weekend, and please correct me if I'm wrong, supposedly your sperm is worth $2 million. <laughs> That's $1982. <laughs> Uh, uh, really? 2001, it might be a whole different story. It might be less, it might be more. I don't know. What happened? <laughs> what happened with that? Well, what the story you heard, I was running, look, I've been around a long time. I was running out of stories to tell in America, okay? <laughs> so I remembered this antique story about when I was in this movie called Staying Alive and I was in this rip-roaring shape. And I remember this very wealthy Beverly Hills woman had called my lawyer and offered him to me a million dollars for my sperm. So the joke was, that was a million dollars in 1982. What ah. would it be today, you see? So it's up for you guys to decide. If you <laughs> <laughs> I said yeah, 20, 20 million would be okay. I'd take two million dollars. <laughs> now, uh, of course, you mentioned uh, uh, staying alive. Yes. Uh, one of my favorites is Saturday Night Fever. And just something I wanted to show you here, I have uh, the Saturday Night Fever album cover. But what I have is an even more classic Sesame <laughs> Street <laughs> Fever. <laughs> Where you have been replaced by Grover from Sesame Street. That's pretty cool. And what a good replacement he is. <laughs> Do you get a say in stuff like that? Oh, uh, probably, and it happened a long time ago, and I yeah. probably said yes, and, and there you have it. It's Grover, you're not going to say no to him. Now, of course, one of the other things as well, I will say, there's probably a lot of women in the audience uh, and people watching at home as well who uh, remember Grease, very fond of Grease. It is uh, probably most people's favourite film. Uh, and there's probably a lot of people who would love to have been Olivia Newton-John around. Probably some of the guys, too, let me think. <laughs> um, is that something you still hold very dear to your heart? I am so proud of Greece that I can't even believe it. I'll tell and, you why. Oh, you yeah, know, come on, if you want to clap it, clap it. Because after 20, what, three years, every generation, every new generation still loves it. So you have three-year-olds who love it, you have 83-year-olds who love it, and I love that a movie could hold up over that many years because no other movie I know of does. So I think Olivia and I made this like kind of gem 
that I, if I had to pick one movie to keep forever, that would be it. I'd put it on the, in a capsule and send it out to space or something. I have to tell you, John, one day on Swordfish, said, come and have a coffee at the end of lunch. Oh, yeah. So I walked into John's trailer. <laughs> I walked into John's trailer and there was Olivia Newton-John sitting next to John Travolta and I went a little bit silly. And <laughs> immediately, the first thing that came to mind, and unfortunately it came out, was my memory of the fact that on the lid of my school desk in sixth grade was a poster of Olivia and I kissed it every morning. <laughs> you didn't tell her. Yes. <laughs> And uh, she said, how's filming? <laughs> <laughs> so how much of a thrill was it to meet Olivia Newton-John in the flesh? Was well, it... that, I mean, that was amazing. But, but, but truly, to put it in perspective, to see John and Olivia together, was, it, was, it so took me back to when I was 28, watching, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> watching Greece and doing Greece dancing competitions when I was a kid and all that. I mean... Two legends, but I mean to work with John, of course, being one of the ultimate things in my life, particularly my professional life. Me. He's in his <laughs> See, he's a dag. He's a yeah, dag. Complete dag. Because it seems to me when you watch uh, movies like Greece, like you and Olivia seem to be just the best of friends, and there's a chemistry there that just we transcends across the screen. Well, what happened, truthfully, is that we were on the search for the character of Sandy, and there were many suggestions that were made, and I said, guys, there's only one person in the world that can play Sandy, and it's Olivia Newton-John. I said, just, just, it's, she's everybody's dream girl, every guy's dream girlfriend, and every girl wants to be like her. Mm. I said, don't even, stop looking, you know? And so they tested her, and she liked the test, they liked the test, and she got the job. But, I mean, there really was never a doubt in my mind that she was it, completely, you know? Did you get the same approval over Hugh for Swordfish? Yes, I did. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sang a couple of songs. <laughs> one week. I'll tell you exactly what, and I'll be blatantly honest here. I was told uh, this, this new actor, Hugh Jackman, is in a movie called X-Men. And they really want to cast, he's, the studio has approved him if you approve him. And I said, well, I guess I should see the movie. So I was so excited, I hadn't slept the night before, I was so tired, and I was not in the mood to see any movie. And I sat there like this, and I see this movie, and then I see Hugh come on, and I went, whoa. I said, geez, he's like Clint Eastwood or Sean Connery or someone and then I kept watching him and he kept on getting more powerful and stronger and I said oh this is the guy for the movie there's no doubt about it so after the movie's over I called the head of the studio said it's a done deal so me and the Aussies man we got uh, <laughs> there you go <laughs> keeping us all employed well okay you've uh, you've worked uh, with a man who I said is over 35 films I think to your credit probably even more that I don't know about uh, do you have any tips for the, the little punk sitting next to you <laughs> On how to make it in the big oh wide world. Oh, God. He doesn't, needs no advice. I mean, he, we have fun, my giving him advice, but the truth is, Hugh has a tremendous uh, capacity to estimate properly what he should do in his life. Do you believe that? Um, yes. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> so, John, what would you say is your yes. secret of success? Um, oh, I don't know. I, I think there's many secrets to success, but uh, all taking it with a grain of salt, I'd imagine, and not taking it too seriously, and yet taking it very responsibly. Some balance there, you know. After my first failure I ever had, I, I was so devastated because I was treated like I had sunk the Titanic. Mm. I said, okay, there's something wrong here. If, if you know, if there's a joke about a brain surgeon uh, operating on a person and the other brain surgeon says, God, if you, know, if you, if you slip and cut this nerve, this person's gonna die. And the other surgeon says, it's, relax, it's not a movie. <laughs> you see, but I realized very early on that movies were, the success of movies were taken too seriously. So once you get over the idea that they're really just a movie and you, you take the good with the bad and the ups with the downs, then, then you, you fare weather, you fare it better. So fortunately, you and I have a giant success together in, in the United States with yep. Swordfish. Yep. We're number one this week. Well, congratulations. <laughs> now... Are you going to, are you going to be a, a very good host and show John around the country while he's here? Oh yeah, we're starting in Melbourne and we're going up to Sydney and uh, I have an 18 hour day itinerary for you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the zoo, we're going everywhere. <laughs> and if you get the chance, the big pineapple. Yes. I was thinking the big banana, but you're right, yeah. Rove. It's big, it's a pineapple, it's a big pineapple. <laughs> it, you have to see it to believe it. Um, but uh, I wish you all the best of success uh, you. with both your careers. I think you're going to be fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, Swordfish uh, does open around the country very soon. Check it out. It's going to be a huge flick. Will you please thank John Travolta and Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.